Welcome, my name is Dr. Jason W. Morrison and I'm a theologist from New South Wales, Australia. Psychologists help people with themselves and other people and theologists help people with themselves and God. Good evening viewers, my name is Dr. Jason W. Morrison. I'm a theologist from New South Wales, Australia. One of my big things is how religious people can turn evil, how good intending people can turn evil. And if you punch in, for instance, sexual abuse into the news on the internet, say, this is what you're going to get. Look on your screen. Look on the screen. Former youth care worker charged with sexual abuse. Now, these are the most recent sexual abuse reports from the news. Bihar short home case. Authorities failed to pay heed to rampant sex abuse signs. That may not necessarily be religious. Um, sexual abuse and religion. A call for compassion. Clergy sexual abuse. The solution is now obvious. Laywoman saga illustrates clerical sexual abuse amongst or the, of adults. Lara Stemple, OSU scandal reminds us men can be sexual abuse victims too. Well, there's an interesting one, isn't there? Bishop Subic to release list of dioceses of Pittsburgh clergy members accused of sexual abuse, and it goes on. Now, these are religious instances of sexual abuse, aren't they? And it goes on. Look, investigation report of sexual abuse by priests. I think this has got a videotape attached to it, this one. Um, this guy actually is on video in Pennsylvania. I think it's in Harrisburg, if I remember rightly. The Muslims are feeding on this one. Um, they, you know, anything to bring down the Christian faith. <clears throat> but this is my point. What is causing these good intending religious people to turn evil? Why are these organizations full of, of leaders that go evil? It's a question that we've got to ask, and it's a question that we've got to get to the bottom of. And that's what I do. I'm going to show you how people don't know how to manage themselves within religion, because religion has a power within it that turns people evil. Now you've got to listen to this, you've got to realize this. What caused the Pharisees to put their God on a, pot, a cross or a pole or whatever you, you believe? What caused that? Let me show you. Uh, please, please come with me and listen to what I'm going to show you because it is the answer to these religious evils. Now, <clears throat> I'm prepared to use the Jehovah Witness Bible. Romans chapter 7. Can it be that you do not know, brothers? And I think for the majority of people, religious people, they just do not know. They just do not know what's causing these apparently good or initially good intending people to begin to do evil acts. And I think the majority of Christians just do not know. For I'm speaking to those who know the law now is picking out the Messianic believers. Gentiles were never supposed to be under the law. Yeah, we've got moral laws. We've got Laws at work, we've got road rules, we've got laws within church, we've got rules within, excuse me, within families. But what I'm talking about now is the rules that we think we need to have for, to make ourselves righteous with God. The things that we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, along with our belief in Christ. These are the things that are causing these religious people, good intending religious people, to turn evil. Now, the Gentiles were never under the law for righteousness. And the law simply defined was, if you do this, I'll bless you. If you don't do this, I'll bless you. If you do this on the negative side, I'll curse you. If you don't do this, I'll curse you. In other words, it was anything we thought we needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad or anything we thought we needed to do or not do to be blessed or be cursed was causing these people to do evil. And if you look throughout the Old Testament, they failed and they failed and they failed. And the culmination of their failure was putting their God on a cross, the Lord Jesus Christ. The law was never meant for Gentiles. That the law is the master over man as long as he lives. For instance, a married woman is bound by the law to her husband while he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. Now what Paul's trying to do is show these people that it's okay to leave the law behind and be married to Christ Jesus. They could not leave their religion, religious laws behind because of their conscience. They didn't think it was conscionable to do that. So then while her husband is living, she would be called an adulteress if she became another's, another, you know, with another man. So he's saying, if the law was still alive and you were going to put your faith in Christ, then you'd be no different to adulterer. But the law's gone now, it's fulfilled, it was abolished in his body on the cross, or on the, what do they call it, a stake. 
the Jehovah Witnesses. Um, and it was put to death in his body, Colossians 1, down in the latter part of that chapter. Now, he's saying it's okay now, it's done, it's dusted, it's finished to be married to Christ, to put your faith in Christ. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law, so that she is not an adulteress if she becomes another becomes another man's, if she married to another man, which was Christ. So they got the, he's saying the law's gone now, it's okay to put your faith in Christ. That's basically what he's saying. Now this is leading somewhere, because what I'm trying to show you is why good intending religious people turn bad, turn evil. Because now everybody's complaining about it, and everybody's saying all this and that about it, and everybody's jumping up and down and all this, but who's giving these people, who's sharing the answer? Who's explaining why this is happening? Why are religious people falling into evil? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you. And it's up to you if you want to accept it or not. But I am going to show you the answer as to why good intending religious people turn evil. And the, con the paradox of it is, it's, their, it's actually their good intention that's causing it. So, my brothers, you also were made dead to the what? What were they made dead to? They were made dead to the law. And here the Jehovah Witnesses, interestingly enough, have got a capital L. Now that's unusual because none of the other translations that I've ever read have got a capital L for law. Now why have the Jehovah... Now I've never seen that before. Why have the Jehovah Witnesses got a capital L there for law? The thing is, are they getting the message across? You are dead to the law. But why? Why are you dead to the law? Well, you're dead to the law through the body of Christ because Christ fulfilled the law. So therefore you've got... The law terminated and extinguished through the body of Christ when he died. It was fulfilled. He never made a mistake. He never made a sin and he fulfilled it. He abolished it. It was done. And now you have the liberty to have faith in Christ. But it's got to be faith in Christ alone without works, without thinking there's something you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. And this is, this is the reason why. We're about to find out the reason why. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. So that we... Now that you might become another's, the one who was raised up from the dead, so that you should bear fruit to God. So, on the one hand, you'll bear fruit to death, death which we'll see, and on the other hand, you'll bear fruit to God. Now, you can only bear fruit to God by giving away all your efforts and all your reasons as to why you need to make God happy or stop Him from being sad, or what you think you need to do to be blessed or not to be cursed, and you've just got to go, Jesus is enough, and now I've just got to get on with my life, I've got to accept that, walk in the Spirit, because I know he's with me. Not, you don't even have to be conscious of all this. The Spirit's with you, empowering you. And get on with your life and fulfill the purpose that, and, the, and the responsibilities that you have in your life. Instead of being, oh, trying to impress Jehovah with this. Or, I'm not making God happy now. You've got to get away from all that. For when we were living according to the, sin, to the flesh. Now, living according to the flesh, here in this context, is living according to the law. It's living under the law. The flesh here is specifically and directly connected to you trying to fulfill the law, which you're forbidden to do as a Christian. Why? Because when you were living according to the flesh or the law or under the law or the things you thought you need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, the sinful passions that were awakened by the... Now listen to me, please. I am tired of seeing all the complaints and all the look what they've done and all, and I do it too. Oh, look what they've done now. Look what these people have done now. How about somebody come up with the answer? Here it is. Get this out there. Put this out there. This is why you're falling. This is why you're sinning. This is what's happening to you people. The sinful passions were awakened by the law. Whenever there is something we think we need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, to be blessed or cursed, we are arousing and awakening our sinful, evil nature. Did you know that? And you awaken this evil aspect of yourself trying to do good. That is where all this trouble's coming from. It's not a joke. It's real life. You're playing with religion. You're thinking you're a Christian. You're thinking you're a Jehovah Witness or whatever else you are. And it's all coming down around you. Looks good on the surface, but what's happening in underneath? You're just awakening your sinful passions that are at work in our bodies to produce fruit to death. Now, all your efforts and all your 
look at me, look at me, or God, are you happy? Or, you know, what have I got to do now? And look at what I'm doing and this, this and this is only producing fruit to death and arousing and awakening your sinful nature. Now, whether you want to accept it or not, it's irrelevant. It's there in black and white. So on the one hand, if you just give yourself to God, to, in Christ and surrender to Christ and go, right, what Christ has done is enough, then you'll bear fruit to God. Look, Christ, fruit to God. Law, fruit to death. We've got to get to the point where we're putting this out there. So these religious people, the Catholics, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Pentecostals, whoever else it is, and all their eagerness and all their, look at me, what I'm doing for God, and all of a sudden they're in a back street shagging a prostitute or molesting a child and have they've gone from righteousness to evil in the blink of an eye because they didn't realize their good works was arousing their sinful nature, their evil nature, which you cannot beat. You're to leave it alone. How do you disempower it? This is how you disempower it. Now it's very hard from where I'm standing to try and get this out there because I haven't got a big enough voice. What I'm actually giving, delivering to you is the answer to why and, and it's a humble answer. It's not I'm better. It's not I oh, look at me. I've got the answer. I struggle with this myself on a day-to-day -day basis. We're up against a very evil, clever and cunning nature inside of us that wants to take us down and destroy everything around us as quickly and as, and as cunningly as it can. Religion is not a joke. This thing is not a joke. The harm that's come out of it should be telling us that. Look at the Jehovah Witness blood doctrine. Who would come up? Who would come up with such a ridiculous and devilish, evil, destructive, murderous doctrine, which has gone to the proportions of genocide? Now, do you think if the authorities knew, right, that personal effort to make God happy or stop him from being sad, while it sounds good, is actually turning this, it's called religiously empowered evil. Please share this video. It's called religiously empowered evil. You've got to share this information. Don't worry about who's done what and all that anymore. That's just going to, you've got to give them the answer. The answer is your works are turning you evil. Can you humble yourself and be happy with what Christ has done for you to have peace with God for time and eternity? Can you get on with your life without your religious pursuits? Is the cross enough? Is the stake enough for you to go, right, my issues are resolved with God? Because if it isn't, you're heading down, you are on this path. But now we have been released from the law. I don't know why they've got this capital L. But you've been released from the law. You've been released from anything you think you need to do or not do to make Jehovah happy or stop him from being sad or to be blessed or cursed and all this other moral stuff that you don't need in religion anyway because we know whether we're being good or not. But how is it if you think you're being good but you're actually doing evil because of your religious behavior? But now we've been released from the law because we have died to what? To that which restrained us. Now the law restrained us in order that we might be slaves in a new sense by the Spirit. Now this is the amazing thing about this organization. They've got a capital L for the law and a, and a, and a small L for the Spirit. So they've got the emphasis on the law, which is a psychological way of connecting you to that word. But they've got the, they've got the minimized S on the Spirit and it should be a capital S because it's the Holy Spirit. And not in the old sense, by the written code. What then are we to say? Is the law sin? Certainly not. The problem isn't the law. The problem is the law is fuels our sinful nature. Our sinful nature needs the law to get its power. That's where it gets its power from. Really, I would not have come to know sin had it not been for the law. For example, I would have not have known covetousness if the law had said, not, said you should not. You must not covet. But sin, finding opportunity afforded by the commandment, worked out in me covetousness of every sort. For apart from the law, ladies and gentlemen, apart from the law, apart from the things I thought I needed to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, the things I thought I had to do or not do to be blessed or cursed, sin was dead. You know, you've got the world out there, the authorities coming in to fix church problems, to fix the evils in the church, the Australian Royal Commission and all this other stuff. Um, the church is having to come in to resolve the, the world is coming in, beg my pardon, to resolve church issues because not even the church people know this is what hap is happening. In fact, I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment arrived, sin came to life again. 
As soon as you think there's something you need to do or not do to make God happy, stop him from being sad, to be blessed or cursed, all you're doing is bringing your sin, your sin, to life again. That's all you're doing. Can you accept it? And But I die because sin has the ability through religious activity to overtake your mind, to overtake your ability to do good. It will get you to the point where you're practicing evil, where you're harming yourself or somebody else. Haven't we got enough evidence for that now? Is somebody finally going to stop and listen and go, look, we're playing with things that are beyond our power. We're empowering sin. We're encouraging sin by the things we think we need to do to be good. Will somebody stop and listen? Please stop and listen to what this says. And there might be a little, there, there might be a massive less amount of carnage. Oh gosh. In fact, I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, or arrived, sin came to life again. But I died, and the commandment that was to lead to life, I found to lead to death. He's telling you, for sin finding opportunity afforded by the, how did sin find, how does sin find opportunity in us? Has anybody ever stopped and gone, what could be causing these religious people who are supposed to be good and probably want to be good to fall prey to their evil nature? It's the things that their religion, their organization is telling them to do or not do to make Jehovah or God happy or stop him from being sad. What they think they need to do to be blessed or cursed. Oh, it all looks good on the surface, but what's happening underneath? There is so much stuff being hidden now under the guise of good works. Will you stop and read what it says in Romans chapter 7? I keep saying Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7. But nobody is listening. Seduce me. See, by the commandment, sin actually seduces you. The evil will seduce you and it will kill your mind. It will kill your ability to do good. It will take you from doing good and make you do evil. Under, pre under, under well-intending pretense. That's why priests in the cloth, elders that are supposed to be representing good, turn evil because their good intention is turning them evil. Because you can't do anything to be righteous with God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work that does that. Oh, but we can't accept that. We have to do something. Oh, we have to do something. to. We have to put our two bobs worth in. Can't you just accept what Christ did is enough? No, we have to do our bit and all that does is turn you evil. But you don't want to hear it and you will not accept it. So the law in itself is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Therefore, did what is good result in my death? Now what he's saying is, is what is good result in my mind losing its way? Certainly not, but the sin. But sin that it might be shown to be sin working out death in me. This evil nature overtaking my mind to the point where I was not doing good but doing evil sin was working out death in me through what is good now that's the clue now please please listen i don't want to waste my time but sin did that it sin did that it might be shown to be sin working out death in me through what is good the good that people thought they had to do was causing sin the righteous things these people think they need to do and the bad things they think they need not to do and all this to make God happy and stop him from being sad was, is what's causing them to sin. And they're forcing these rules on other people. And it's just a dominoes effect. Everyone's just falling left, right and centre. They're shunning. They're, 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 they're passive. They Oh, gosh. Through things that they thought were good. So that through the commandments, sin might become far more sinful. Now, if you want to become far more sinful, and it's here in black and white, is this the Bible or not? If you want to become far more sinful, think that there's something you need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. Because basically what you're saying is what Jesus has done is not enough. And whether you like it or not, it was Jesus, it was God on the cross, taking some responsibility for the mess we're in. Oh, but no, he had to die for our sin. He paid some prices for what he's caused as well. It was his blood, Acts 20, 28, verse 20 and chapter 20 and verse 28. It was God's blood. 
The Word become flesh. There was no Jesus before Christ was born in that womb, come out of that womb. There was only God and His Word. But that Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. It was God all right, whether you believe it or not. It had to be God because God took accountability for the mess we're in and allowed us to punish Him on the cross. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly. Now that's the problem, see? We say we're fleshly, but we don't know how to disarm it. Sold under sin, for I do not understand what I am doing. What do most people do now when they go to court? They say that they've got a mental illness or this and that. No, they've been overtaken by their sinful nature, whether it be religiously empowered or just an evil act. The problem with the religiously empowered sin is it shouldn't be there, but it is, because the thing that they thought was good was actually causing them to sin. For I do not practice what I wish, but I do what I hate. However, if I do what I wish, I do what I do not wish, I agree that the law is fine. But now I am no longer the one doing it, but it is the sin that resides in, in, within me. Do you want to overcome the sin that resides within you? Do you? Do you really want to? Haven't you stopped and asked yourself, I'm running around trying to get the power of the Holy Spirit and I'm defeated. I'm doing all the praise, I'm doing all the prayer, I'm doing all the knocking on doors, I'm running around here, I'm setting up the hall, I'm putting out the chairs, I'm knocking on doors, I'm doing this and that, but something inside me just ain't right. There's just something that isn't right. It's your sinful nature that resides in you going, thank you, thank you, thank you, and then bam, all of a sudden you're doing evil. For I know in me that is in my flesh, that is in your sinful nature, not in your body. You need to look after your body. But you need to disarm your sinful nature, that part of the flesh. There dwells nothing good. There's nothing good in your sinful nature. Now, don't, don't mistake that as your body. You've got to look after your body. We're talking about the sinful nature when it comes to the flesh. In this instance, it's a sinful nature. Up here, it was talking about the law, where flesh was mentioned. Here somewhere. That's flesh in regard to keeping the law. This is actually flesh directly describing the sinful nature, not the body. For I have the desire to do what is fine, but not the ability to carry it out. And why didn't he have the ability to carry it out? Because he was trying to do things or not do things to make God happy and stop him from being sad. And he became me. Paul was a murderer, a Pharisee and a murderer. He went around murdering people, Christians or not. For I do not do the good that I wish, but the bad that I do not wish is what I practice. If then I do what I do not wish, I am no longer the one carrying it out, but is the sin dwelling in me. Now, if you want to go evil, don't do what I'm saying. Just don't do it. Just forget about it. Go and be evil. I find then the law is the law in, I find then this law in my case. When I wish to do what is right, what is bad is present with me. When I think there's something I need to do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, there's something coming over me that makes me do the opposite because our sinful nature gets its power from that. Romans 6.14 You are no longer, sin shall not have dominion over me because I am not under law but under grace. As soon as you're under law, sin will, whether you like it or not, whether you admit it or not, whether you look like it or not, whether you're acting like it or not, sin will have dominion over you. For I find then the law in my case. When I wish to do what is right, what is bad is present with me. I really delight in the law of God according to the man I am within. But I see in my body another law warring against the law of my mind and leading me captive to sin's law that is in my body. Miserable man that I am, who will rescue me from this body undergoing this death? Thanks be to God through the Lord Jesus Christ through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has brought peace with God, therefore having been justified by faith. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to say it and then you say it after me. Therefore having been justified by faith, I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. So then with the mind I myself am a slave to God's law. Stay away from the law, but with my flesh with my sinful nature, to sin's law. And sin's law gets its power from God's law. The only way you can disarm it is to go, right, there's nothing I need to do to make God happy or stop him from being sad, to be blessed or cursed. My victory is in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now share that. 
if you really want to help these religious people, if you really want to help these deceived, miserable, evil, horrible religious people that look great on the surface and are doing all the right things on the surface, but underneath are about as evil as you can get, share this. There's your answer. It's the finished work of Christ. It's surrendering and going, right, I don't need to do any more. And if I choose to do more, I expect nothing. Nothing good or nothing bad. It'll just be life working itself out around me, as it were. It's all voluntary. If I choose to give my time to that, I'm going to give my time to that. And you might neglect your family. You might, you know, it's up to you. But there's nothing you can do to make God happy or stop him from being sad. All you can do is accept the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be on YouTube. Please share or like. Um, maybe even comment if you're watching on Facebook, like, comment, to share. To but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-old life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should.